Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Electro Master channel. Today on the bench we've got a ProWeld MIG250 professional welding machine that decided to stop working. But don't worry, we're going to take it apart, check everything step by step, and fix it in a way even a complete beginner can understand. If you want to learn how this kind of welder works, how to troubleshoot it, and how to get it running again, stick with me until the end. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and tap the bell so you don't miss any future repair videos, always explained clearly, simply, and with no nonsense. Let's get started. As you can see, this welding machine has been opened before and someone attempted a repair, unfortunately, without success. We're going to take a close look at its current condition, both visually and electrically, to figure out what's wrong. We'll inspect the power stages, the main electronic components and any signs of improper previous work. The goal is to fully diagnose the unit and, if possible, bring it back to life and working like it should. From what I can see, there have already been some attempts to repair the power supply section. The MOSFET transistor that drives the chopper stage has been soldered in temporarily, most likely during an unsuccessful repair attempt. The soldering is not professional, and the surrounding components may be affected by this unstable installation. Such improvisation can lead to malfunction, instability, or even damage to other parts of the circuit. I found a resistor soldered on the backside of the PCB, directly across the pins of the main filter capacitor in the power supply, the one that provides voltage to the IC controlling the MOSFET. Unfortunately, the soldering is poor, and even worse, the connection itself is completely wrong, the resistor is essentially shorting the positive terminal of the capacitor to the negative, ground. This is not only electrically incorrect, but it also poses a serious risk, it could damage the control IC or cause further failures in the power supply. I noticed that the varistor is soldered on the backside of the PCB in an improvised and visually poor manner. This kind of mounting is not recommended, as it can affect the reliability of the electrical contact and the insulation from other PCB traces. I will test the varistor to make sure it's still functional and within spec, and then resolder it properly on the component side of the board, as it should be from the factory, ensuring both functionality and safety in the circuit. I will begin by checking all the MOSFET transistors in the primary power section to ensure none of them are shorted or faulty. At the same time, I'll also test the rectifier diodes in the secondary stage, as they're often affected when there's a failure in the power supply. 
The goal is to make sure there are no remaining short circuits or damaged components that could cause further issues when powering the unit. Only after confirming that all key components are within safe parameters, I will power up the unit using 230 VAC. After performing measurements, I found that some of the MOSFET transistors in the primary power stage are shorted. This is likely the main reason the welder isn't powering on or is triggering protection. On the other hand, the secondary rectifier diodes tested fine, they show no signs of short circuits or excessive leakage. The next step is to desolder and remove all faulty MOSFETs from the board. This will allow me to further inspect the rest of the circuit without interference and prepare the board for installing new, compatible, high-quality replacement components. I removed all the faulty MOSFET transistors from the board and cleaned up the excess solder from the area to prevent any shorts or unwanted connections. After that, I carefully inspected the traces and surrounding components to ensure everything is in good condition. The next step is to power up the circuit without the power MOSFETs installed, in order to check if the control section of the power supply is working correctly and delivering the expected low voltage rails for the control IC and related circuits. This test is critical to confirm that the power supply is stable and safe before installing new transistors. After completing all the necessary checks and confirming that there were no short circuits, I powered up the unit using 230 VAC through a controlled method. Unfortunately, the power supply is still not functional, it's not generating the required control voltages for proper circuit operation. This suggests that the issue lies within the control section or in the startup circuitry supplying the control IC. I will now proceed to investigate the power supply in more detail, checking the startup components, the voltage across the main filter capacitor, the functionality of the control IC, and looking for any broken traces or faulty passive components. I'll carry out the required repairs to restore proper operation of the power section. As part of the continued troubleshooting process, I replaced several key components in the power supply section. I changed the main filter electrolytic capacitor in the primary side, which is responsible for stabilizing the voltage that powers the control circuit. I also replaced the control IC that drives the MOSFET, as it was likely damaged or non-functional. Additionally, I replaced the 10 ohm gate resistor between the IC output and the MOSFET gate, this resistor is critical for limiting gate current and can easily fail during a short circuit or abnormal switching. With these new components properly installed, I'll proceed to power up and test the power supply to see if it now delivers the required control voltages. After replacing the previously mentioned components, the filter capacitor, the control IC, and the 10 ohm gate resistor, the power supply came back to life. Upon powering it up, I confirmed that the control voltages are now present, which indicates that the control section is operating correctly and the startup sequence is functioning as it should. This is a major milestone in the repair process, as it confirms that the power supply is now stable and ready to support the rest of the circuit. The next step will be installing new MOSFET transistors and performing a full system test.
Before powering up the unit with the new MOSFETs installed, I'll perform a full check of all the electrolytic capacitors in the power supply. For this, I'm using a specialized instrument, the Atlas ESR60, which allows me to measure both ESR, equivalent series resistance, and capacitance directly on the PCB, without desoldering the capacitors. Checking ESR is especially important in switch mode power supplies, as a capacitor might show correct capacitance but still have degraded ESR, which can lead to instability or failure of other components. This step ensures that all capacitors are within spec before proceeding to the final power-up and load testing. After installing the new MOSFET transistors and completing all checks, I proceeded to the functional test of the welder. Upon powering it up, I needed to verify whether the output welding voltage was present at the electrode terminals. To do this safely and visibly, I connected an incandescent light bulb across the welding output. Incandescent bulbs are excellent for this type of test because they respond instantly to voltage, providing a clear visual confirmation of output. In this case, the bulb lit up properly, confirming that the power stage is working and the unit is delivering welding voltage as expected. And with that, the repair of the ProWeld MIG250 welding machine is complete and successful. The power supply is working, output voltage is present, and the unit is ready to be sent for real-world testing. If you found this video helpful or interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the ElectroMaster channel for more in-depth repair content explained step by step. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions, see you in the next video.